two things real quick. First off, how did you prepare for this fight? Because obviously you prefer, prepare for different fights different ways. And after the fight was over, I noticed Joe Rogan almost had to finally take the mic away from you because you were thanking everybody and, and, and all this and that there. But I thought the very last guy that you uh, mentioned, uh, and that's when Joe kind of took the mic away from you, I thought, found it very interesting that you gave a shout-out to uh, Cowboy Cerrone and saying that he's going to, you know, whoop butt here in his upcoming fight there. Now, here's a guy that you might have to fight here down the road sometime eventually, yet you guys are obviously friends like that. So how did you prepare for Showtime, and what's your relationship with Cerrone? Because obviously uh, you're pretty good friends when you're, you know, you're going out there. Would you like to fight him today? Is it tough to fight (laughs) friends, or how does that work? Uh, Donald was one of my main training partners for this fight. That's why I congratulated him, <clears throat> thanked him, and I know he's going to go smash this guy next weekend in Vancouver and show that guy what the UFC is all about. He's fighting a very good submission expert. I don't really – a Brazilian guy. Um, Donald's tough. He's getting better and better. His wrestling is it, it's getting – that was his weakness for a while, and now he's uh, he's destroying wrestlers in the gym right now. It's crazy. He's just got to stay off of motorcycles preparing exactly. for the fight. He's crazy, man. <laughs> he's wild. He really is a cowboy. Um Let's see, yeah, Cub Swanson, Frankie Gomez, former w, uh, WEC veteran, uh, John the Magician uh, Dodson. So there's a lot of guys we had running off the cage, a lot of rangy kickboxers working with Carlos Condit. So we had uh, we didn't have to bring anybody in. We have just we have such a great strong core of guys at Jackson's that we have a little bit of everybody. And um, I was just yeah, I'm I'm pumped to see him go out there, and uh, I'm pumped to see Jackson's Winkle John's doing so well. You know. You don't accidentally become the best team team in MMA. You don't win Coach of the Year back to back years by accident. So that, you know, we got the recipe for success out there, and I'm just happy to be part of the team. You know, we always hear in football, you know, it's like this quarterback is a scout team, but you can't really emulate Peyton Manning or Tom Brady or Michael Vick or whatever. How do you get somebody to get in the cage to show you what to expect from Anthony Showtime Pettis? Because there's certainly nobody else out there like him either with the unorthodox moves he does, the flying kicks, the crazy guard, everything else out there. So what do you do to get somebody as close as that? Do you just send in guy after guy after guy to keep it fresh? And because the one thing that I know about you is, and, you know, if you do get that championship fight that I think we're all in agreement that you deserve here the one thing i know is you're not going to be one of those guys when it's like is he going to have the energy is he going to be able to go five rounds it looks like you could go five hours straight and maybe you should do a five hour energy and maybe <laughs> they should endorse you or something like that i don't even need this crap but if you do you can be like play the carpenter guida here but i mean you are just a non-stop ball of energy when you're in that cage um yeah five rounds would be that that's our bread and butter man i haven't fought a uh, five round title fight since i lost to gilbert melendez before that my first was against josh thompson in the strike force lightweight belt um, yeah, that that's game plan for us, man. That's a it's bread and butter. That's a textbook, you know, fight for us. So we'll see what happens. I mean, you see Frankie Edgar, how he overcame, you know, the odds against uh, getting dropped two, three, four times against uh, Gray Maynard. So depending on what happens with that, um, I'd love to fight five rounds, man. If you, I, I keep saying if people want to see the most exciting lightweight title fight, I have to be part of it. All right. When it comes to Maynard or Edgar, what do you think happens in their third fight and which one of them do you think do you match is is do you match up with one better than the other? Are they different fighters? Are they similar fighters? Who do you see coming out on top of that one? And do you have a preference to one or the other? I know the political correct answer is I fight anybody that's in front of me. But I mean, you know, let's face it, we're all human, and you know, you, you've got to have some thoughts about exactly what you think is your strengths or weaknesses. And obviously, you're getting better and better every fight as well. Yep, absolutely. Uh, we obviously want to fight the guy who has the belt, you know, because we think we're shaping up for you know a title picture. I think Frank Yeager wins that fight. <clears throat> Another decision. It's, it's going to be hard to finish Gray Maynard. It's going to be hard to finish uh, Frank Yeager. He's Frankie just moves in and out. He, we're we're similar, but we have different footwork. You know, what I mean, he has very good boxing footwork. I just kind of have crazy, you know, awkward. It's hard to track. You know what I mean? Um, what he did to BJ Penn twice was unbelievable. You know, he beat BJ for 50 minutes. I think. You know, I think it's safe to say he beat him 10 rounds to zero. Um, Gray Maynard's just a, a big, powerful wrestler, you know, who no one really wants to fight. But if you can get him out of his realm, you saw one of the smallest guys in the lightweight division, and Frank Yeager took him down, you know, which I've never seen that happen, you know, against uh, against Gray. So I think we match up against both of them well. And in the gas tank, I think we have better than Gray. And I think we have just different – I think we're, we have more power in our hands than Frankie, and uh, the gas tanks are going to be, you know, going to be the same. He's a great kid, great family. His parents are awesome. My parents, we see each other at the fights. Just I look up to both of those guys because they're wrestlers and they have what I want. You know, they're fighting for the belt, and I want my strap. When it comes to your division, I always used to think that the light heavyweight 205 was the deepest division in the UFC. Now with the inception of WEC, 155 might actually be that. We mentioned Edgar and Maynard. BJ Penn is still around there. 
Uh, you have guys like Kenny Florian, uh, you know, who, who can change weight classes and be in there. And then, of course, you have all the guys from the WEC. Who are some of the other guys out there that you think are the cream of the crop like yourself that could be in title contention? And do you think it now may be the, be the deepest division in the entire UFC? Light heavyweight is amazing. I think, um, you know, we've seen the front runner now in John Jones. Rashad Evans is right up there. He's fighting uh, Phil Davis coming up here in a couple of months. So that's one of the toughest, but I think it's safe to say that uh, lightweight is the toughest division in the world right now, especially with the acquisition of Strike Force with the merger of the WEC. So it's just there's so many guys out there, so many good wrestlers. If you, if you can't wrestle in the, in the lightweight division, you're not going to be around long. You're going to find your – you might be sticking around, but you're not going to be winning big fights, you know what I mean? So you got to be quick. you got to be in shape. you got to be able to strike, and you got to be able to stop a takedown. So we've seen everyone's evolving in their game, and uh, – it, I think I absolutely think it's safe to say that the lightweight division is bar none the best out there, and I'm happy to be part of it. Just makes me train even harder, you know. No, we see Dia obviously with the strike force coming over to the UFC and all that, them purchasing it or whatever happened with it. Um, Nick Diaz fighting St. Pierre. Do you see more fights like this happening in the future? Also, at the heavyweight division, everybody's talking about Alistair Overeem, but who you just mentioned, Gilbert Melendez. I have another possible guy who was dominant in his last fight. Another guy who maybe a matchup for you. Who or whoever has the belt, I imagine, down the road. Do you see that happening? Oh, absolutely. I think those would be great. And Man, I can't believe because a week or so ago I heard that Dana wasn't really close to putting the, the Nick Diaz GSP fight together, and then two days later, boom, it's it's going to be one of the best fights ever. I'm so pumped for that. Um, the cool thing, it's going to be here in uh, in Vegas. I thought they might do it in Toronto, but uh, it's nice to have kind of a neutral, you know, proving grounds. Um, and I think there's going to be great super fights too, you know, which could be for number one contender. Mm -hmm. Gilbert Melendez is on a tear. I don't think he's lost since he lost to Josh Thompson two or three years ago, and since then he went back and crushed him. He's just been finishing strikers. He's been finishing submission guys. Uh, he's on top of his game right now. He's huge for 55. I can't believe he used to fight 145, and I fought him, you know, 155, and he's I mean, he's getting better everywhere. He's training with a very great camp in um, – you know, with the, with uh, Jake Shields, with the Diaz brothers, there's, the list goes on. So um, rematch is definitely in the future. Yeah, and, and you know, it, we're it, it's funny because we're talking about how deep this division is, but then you also have names like Eddie Alvarez who could come over someday. Jose Alder, they're talking about maybe moving up because he's wiping out everybody at 145. So, I mean, it's just crazy, the 155 division out there. We've only got a couple minutes left here, and i got to ask you this too because I know one of your biggest supporters, certainly your whole family's around there. Your mom's there all the time wearing the Guida's mom shirt and that, and I was talking to her, very nice lady. Met her years ago over at the Palms and that. And, uh, but I do notice one thing. When you're on the ground in that, when she's watching your fights she's kind of looking up at the monitors but then when you're like in top position and you're in control then she's kind of watching a little bit more so is that a little bit because because i can't even imagine i was actually sitting next to uh and i was telling jimmy about this ramsey's stepfather actually took the seat right next to me when i was watching his fight and i mean he was just like all nervous and when he got hit by ferguson of course he was very you know upset and i mean i think he went down in his seat as much as ramsey did in the cage is it watching it on TV maybe a little bit easier for her sometimes because of what's going on in there? I mean, I know she's your biggest supporter in that, but that's got to be hard as hell to watch your son out there in the cage in a world where, you know, I mean, it's as close to the gladiators as we get. Right. No, that's a very interesting <laughs> question. And um, no parent wants to see their kids take abuse or take any sort of beating. And I think my mom feels, you know, a lot safer when I'm in, in, when I'm in the guard, when I get the takedown, obviously, you know, because – you know, I'm shorter, you know, for lightweight division. I take strikes, you know, sometimes. Sometimes, you know, having a solid chin is my worst asset, you know. Kind of just leave it out there for guys. But uh, I think a cool view would be to, to view some of these parents and people in the crowd sometimes during the fight and see what their reactions are. You know, I mean, it would be a different angle for the UFC to look at, for mixed martial arts to look at, because just to see the reactions I think would get a, bit, a rise out of the crowd.